My Precision Matthews PM1228 lathe showed up on my doorstep about three months ago. Due to some surgery that I had, I just now got it set up. Now that I have it on the bench, let's take a look at that machine. Let's look at some of the features that it has. And we'll give you a little information on what I had to do to get it moved from my garage into my shop and up on the bench. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So the first thing I had to do was get it lifted off the pallets. And in the manual, there was no specific instructions showing exactly where the best lift points were. There's some nice openings in the casting of the bed and that seemed like a very obvious choice for my pick points. So I threw some straps in there and got it all set to go and started to go up with it and immediately the lathe started to roll. I knew that I needed something to stabilize it more. My solution was to lift the lathe just enough to get the mounting brackets installed. And then I was able to sling it from one of those mounting brackets. From there, I was able to lift it up off the pallets, get the pallets out of the way, and then set it down on a rolling cart that I had made. If you are at all familiar with the videos on my channel, especially those pertaining to my machining equipment, you would know that that is my mill. Over in that corner, we have what was formerly the home of my DIY mill, which was the mill head off my mill lathe combo. And over here is where the mill lathe combo lived before it was separated into two pieces, and then just as a lathe after it was separated into two pieces. Prior to moving my new lathe into its new home, I had to build a workbench. And I extended it from what I had over here. I used treadmill tracks, just like I had when I originally built the workbench for the mill. And I actually took the top off of the workbench that was there in the corner and replaced it with treadmill track so that I have a nice uniform workbench surface the entire way. Once we got it rolled into the shop, a cherry picker was used to pick it up and set it down on the bench. We got it set down when we picked it up and put it on the bench. We actually used two straps, but I had to lift it with a single strap to get the first strap out because it was actually underneath the legs. I wish we had video of showing you how it actually went on the bench, but this is a small space and honestly it was kind of a pain in the butt. Getting it picked in such a way that it was level and that it wasn't rolling front to back was super challenging. Ultimately, we ended up attaching to the legs there and there, making sure they were secure and using that strap on that end. And then this strap is in the position that it was in and so that we had two full straps picking it up as we went. With it on the bench, the mounting holes in the legs were used to bolt it to the bench. Obviously a lathe like this needs to be leveled and I could go into detail on how to do that, but there are so many other good videos out there showing you how to level a lathe. This lathe came with a turret style tool post holder. Thankfully, when I got this lathe from Precision Matthews, it came with an AXA quick change tool post holder. I could spend a bunch of time showing you how I installed that, but the reality of it is that was pretty straightforward. The only thing that I had to do that took a little bit was I had to remove the set screw that was holding in the spring-loaded piece for the turret style tool post holder. And then there's also a set screw on the back side of the compound that actually binds into the teeth of the shaft coming up out of the tool post holder. That has to be loosened and then at that point you can easily remove the shaft that was part of the tool post holder and install the shaft for the AXA style tool post holder. From there it's just as simple as putting your favorite cutting blade 
in an AXA type quick change tool holder and getting it lined up so that it is dead center on the piece that you were working or dead center to the concentricity of the lathe. And then we can start making cuts. So let's go over some basic features and basic functions of this PM1228 Precision Matthews lathe. This is your on off panel, direction, speed, all those kind of things, emergency stop. We'll turn all that on in just a minute. You have your gearbox here, which allows you to set up for threading without having to change most of your change gears. Now this lathe did come with a set of change gears and there are options to change stuff out, but most basic threading can actually be accomplished by adjusting these knobs. That's kind of a nice feature. I was planning on putting an ELS on this lathe before I got it, but because of the fact that it has the gearbox and I am able to adjust those kind of things, I may not end up putting the ELS on it. That remains to be seen. It just depends on how it ends up working once I've played with it and done some threading using this gearbox. Obviously we have the chuck. This unit uses a nice D1-4. Comes with the three jaw self-centering. I also got the independent four jaw to go with it. Quick change tool post that I installed. You saw that in time lapse. And then we have a bunch of accessories and controls down here. The first control is the carriage moving handle that you are able to move it quickly. This is not something I would use when I'm actually making cuts because it's not fine enough, but it does allow you to quickly move the carriage from one end to the other. My old lathe only had a 16 inch bed. This lathe has a 28 inch bed. So that makes this control really nice to be able to get this carriage quickly down to one end or the other and then we can do fine adjustments from there. Here we have the half nut to be able to engage the lead screw to the carriage. Obviously compound on the top. We have the cross feed to be able to go in and out. And then we have this little lever over here, which only works when the half nut is disengaged. Allows you to drive the carriage forward when you have it in the down position. And if you turn it like that and go up, you can now drive the carriage from side to side. And the direction that it's going is dependent on the direction that the spindle is going and the lead screw. I'll demonstrate all that in just a minute. Over here, we have the main controls and they're really pretty simple. You've got a master power. Once it comes on, you have direction controls. So you have forward, you have reverse, you have on and off, and then you have a speed knob. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that down. If I wanna turn this on, we can see the spindle is spinning. We can adjust the speed. turn it off. Obviously this is an emergency stop to cut the power to the system in an emergency situation. All you have to do is hit it. You can see the lights just went out there. One thing that's nice about this is you can hit forward and reverse on the fly without damaging anything. So if I turn this on, turn it up, if I hit the reverse button, it'll come to a stop and then spin the other direction. So you're not damaging anything. Again, these are our settings for the threading, and those can also be hit on the fly. Precision Matthews doesn't recommend changing these knobs at high speed, but at low speeds, they change without any issue. Right, let's go ahead and turn that down. We can engage the half nut, and you can see that the carriage is now moving. So let's make some chips. I have a piece of aluminum chucked up in the lathe, ready to go. 
Let's get the blade close and see what we can do here. All right, let's go ahead and face this. We're gonna start by turning it on. So the half nut is disengaged so that we can use the X and Y power feed on the carriage. And it's just as simple as pulling the lever down and it begins to feed. The result is a beautiful face cut. It's nice and smooth. I'm not feeling any ridges. There's some lines you can see, but that's typical with any machining. Overall though, super smooth. Now let's go ahead and go the other direction and cut the outside of this. Same thing, we're gonna use the power feed knob we got to rotate the knob 180 degrees and then come up and it begins to feed. And that's a finish that I am very happy with. It's very smooth. It has almost that rainbow quality to it, which shows a super nice cut. And I'm going to be able to make a lot of really good things using this lathe. Now, to the keen-eyed among you, you may be looking at this quick change tool post and go, well, he's got that at quite an angle. I did that just to easily be able to face and turn this piece of aluminum without having to change out my tool, that kind of thing. Normally, I would use the chuck face to get this perfectly lined up so that everything is traveling nice and parallel to the face of the chuck. But for this application, just this simple setup, I wanted to be able to do it all with just one tool. I hope that gives you a little more information on this PM1228. I'm gonna be making parts and doing projects with this. I'm sure I'll find some upgrades that need to be done. And there will be future videos involving this lathe. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I will do my best to get them answered. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.